What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overload here. Since talking about Halloween ends in this video here again today, talking about the box office projections that came out a couple days ago or a few days ago at this point and going into my thoughts on an idea of or revolving around Corey Cunningham maybe bringing Michael Myers to Laurie Strode in some capacity and making a deal with the shape. So just to jump into the box office stuff really quick to get that out the way, according to Box Office Pro, Halloween Ends is projected to have maybe a three-day three opening weekend landing somewhere between $35 million to $45 million. Some people have their opinions on that, of course, that are different from others, obviously, as opinions are always different. But that is a good sign to me when it relates to the box office projection. Obviously, I think, yes, it would be higher if they weren't going to Peacock as well simultaneously but when you have that occurring and then still have a big box office opening like this for a slasher movie i think that's pretty good um obviously we know that the 2018 movie overperformed so when that movie overperformed i think a lot of people tend to forget that that movie overperformed so even though the kills and ends might not be matching with the 2018 movie are going to be doing or did keep in mind that movie overperformed and now i know also the lackluster marketing that some of you think this has this movie has offered is also probably factored into why these projections are kind of this low but even still this is good to me as far as like showing that even with very minimal effort uh i think that it's been minimal effort we've gotten some interesting things along the way but i think you know they would have gone harder considering this is their last hurrah with the ip this is an impressive feat as far as like putting out a one final last Halloween movie and it's tracking to do 35 to 45 million in three days. Now, this could end up doing more. The reason it could end up doing more is because of the fact that still keep in mind, what if there was something to what Jamie Lee Curtis was saying in that announcement video when she announced that it will be going to Peacock on the same day? What if indeed you're going to want to go see the movie in theaters, then jump to see it on Peacock because there's something in the Peacock version that might be different from the theatrical version. So then people who watch it in theaters, they'll go to Peacock those who decide to watch it at home because they just thought hey yeah i don't want to go to a theater they might say hey that's a little convincing if i hear online that the theatrical release had a different ending i'm gonna go watch the one in theaters we'll see if that ends up being why or if it's even true if that ends up boosting the box office projection obviously positive word of mouth would help too if anything if this movie gets lackluster reviews like halloween kills did i think that would have a minor effect on the box office projection but not much michael myers i think is still a big draw hyping up a final battle between him and laurie strode i still think is a big draw so i think they'll be fine and of course again since it's the last movie i don't really think they're also that too concerned about making a lot of money outside of just maybe slightly over 100 million 200 million and calling it quits but jumping into this idea about Corey cunningham and this team up he seems more than all but confirmed until we see the movie to be having with Michael Myers and how this could impact Laurie Strode. In the TV spot, there's a moment, I've talked about this in other videos, Corey says to Laurie, at least I think it's Laurie that he's talking to, what are you gonna do when Michael comes back for you? Cause he's coming. Now, of course he could be talking to Allison, but chances are he's talking to Laurie. We've already seen behind the scenes footage too where he's shown interacting with Laurie. So of course it's safe to then assume he's gonna interact with her more than once and taunt her about Michael what if at some point in the movie with that sewer sequence we know we saw of michael choking the boy we'll see how he ends up in that sewer anyway upon whatever reason leads him down there and then ultimately discovering michael what if upon that he ends up saying something to michael about Lori, like hey if you don't kill me i'll take you to Lori." here's the problem there i think they've already gone out of the way to kind of establish that michael and Lori. Well, Lori, of course, remembers Michael, but Michael's remembering of Lori is kind of up in the air, I think, anyway. But uh, the Nitty Neal instance that we know is going to happen in the movie will then have many people think he does remember her for whatever reason. So is Corey saying her name going to cause him to remember Lori if this happens? Or is something else going to trigger that? Because if Lori and Michael, again, don't have a conflict and all of this conflict that they ultimately will have in the movie is rooted to michael deciding not to kill Corey because Corey said hey let me go and i'll lead you to laurie strode again not really too on board with that as far as like that's what i would have done it's all about again how it's executed though and it could be executed very well i just still personally probably won't end up liking that direction but will commend that it was done in a way that was still compelling if that makes sense uh 
I think you should have at least just worked with that conflict that was established at the end of Kills. I get that she's moved on with her life and everything, but I feel as though having it be by pure coincidence isn't gonna isn't gonna be something that's a little very convincing to a lot of people. Because if Corey Cunningham makes a deal with Michael to say, hey, don't kill me and I'll take you to Lori Strode. Well, again, how does that happen? How does that go about happening? Because I think also based off certain footages or clips from the movie that are in this footage, we don't even really get too much to even validate a thought like that occurring, I, I, I would say. It seems more likely that Corey is being effed with and he's going to decide to, you know, F back with those people. <laughs> Go after them the way they came after him. But of course, his is much more worse because he's going to try to kill these people. I believe, honestly, Corey Cunningham would just simply be a copycat killer that decides to steal Michael's mask. And then the movie is going to go from there because making a deal with Michael to say, hey, don't kill me and I'll and I'll take you to Lori. I mean, it's it, it, it's mostly just backed up by that bit of dialogue, him saying, hey, what are you going to do when Michael comes for you? Because he's coming. It's like, OK, bro, well, why don't you just take him take him to her now? That's why I'm like, I don't think that's something that's going to happen. But I know I've seen people talk about this potentially happening. And I wouldn't be against it as much as I would have not have done it. Now, of course, going off of execution, I might be against that wholeheartedly. I really just think they're dropping the ball so far on the surface. Of course, when I see the movie, I'll have all the context. I think they are dropping the ball when it pertains to giving these two a reason to battle outside of just pure coincidence. Uh, at the end of Kills, you had it right there in front of you. Yeah, Lori found out that Michael wasn't after her, but she has she had more than enough reason to go after this dude after he took out Karen and and in should have started there. And we could have gone into uh, the, the rest of the night with her hunting down Michael and learning to, you know, get over that, learning that how something of what she did for her, all her adulthood kind of partially contributed to why Karen ended up dead and decided, you know, hey, I'm going to liberate from myself from this now that he's gone. But doing it just because he's MIA, I don't think is really the smartest thing anyway, because, of course, he's going to come back as he does. But we'll see what happens when the movie comes out. What do you guys think about an idea like that of Corey making a deal with Michael to bring him to Lori to survive? If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications. You can never miss a video in the description. I'll have links on my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.